Welcome to HQ Live. Guess what today is? It's HQ Live T-shirt day. T-shirt quilts. We all have our T-shirts. I have mine from my family reunions. You have what? I have a bag of my daughter's high school and junior high T-shirts. I've got quilt nerd T-shirt. <laughs> Hashtag quilt nerd. <laughs> Perfect. What you got there? I've got a football jersey from my son. Ooh, that's got a few stains uh, on it. Oh yeah, we're gonna work with this though, that we're gonna show you how to use this kind of stuff. Even All right. In the well, let's get started. I think, because of seeing that, I think we're gonna have to do some prep work on t-shirts. Definitely. Right, are you up for that, Christina? Well, I've got a lot of prep work to do, so <laughs> yes, let's get started. Did. All right, we're gonna learn how to get those t-shirts ready, because there's all different kinds of t-shirts. We're gonna learn how to get them ready, how to get them pieced, quilted, and given away. Well, Christina, you have all that pile of t-shirts, but you have some tips on how to prepare those t-shirts. So tell me what you've learned, discovered. Okay, well, the first step with your t-shirts is you wanna make sure that they're washed. Most t-shirts have been well you used. Put a dirty t-shirt in? <laughs> you don't wanna put a dirty one in, but not only that, but you, you don't wanna put in a brand new t-shirt because it's a little bit more stiff it hasn't quite shrunk down to the proper size. So before you use any of your t-shirts, make sure you wash them and then dry them in the dryer to make sure that they get shrunk to the proper size. So I can't just hang it on a... No, because you're gonna wash your quilt and you don't want some to shrink and some to so not shrink. So you really want it to be shrunk. Yes. So you wanna make sure you wash and dry in the dryer okay. all of your t-shirts. So another thing is um, some of the t-shirts have pockets on them mm -hmm. or buttons, different embellishments, right. rhinestones, just depends on what you have. So you need to make the decision of what you're gonna do with that. So for instance, with the pocket, um, you have these openings. When you're stitching on the long arm machine, you run the risk of getting stuck in those pockets. Right. So you can baste it closed and stitch over it. You can baste it closed, stitch around it, or you can just, if you're brave, leave it open and stitch around it. Um, another fun thing is putting little treats or notes or something oh, in those cute. pockets if you're giving it away as a gift. Right. So so this, this is a big enough pocket. You could almost put like a child's pajamas in it. <laughs> yes. Like, well, there's a pajamas. <laughs> but the thing too is, uh, so what if I wanted these pockets to be open at the end, but I want to have safety in quilting? Just based along the edge. And then afterwards take that Just basting out? take that out. basting out. So then you have that fun mm -hmm. three-dimensional type feel. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, another thing, um, if you're concerned about some of the embellishments that might be on the quilt, like really thick patches, All right. if you want, you can take those off and then reapply them after you quilt them. So you can quilt but, over the top yeah. and then just put it on. So that's because part of Because I would prep think work. those really heavy ones, like patches off of, of um, school sweaters and that, mm -hmm. if you want to put them on a quilt, they wouldn't quilt over as easy. Yeah, and I think we're going to be going over some of okay. those tips later All on. Right. So yeah. seams. Seams, those are up to you. If you want to have the seam in, um, I think that we had a seam under here, maybe. I don't know if the camera can see right here. Oh, there's a little seam there. We've got a seam in this one. So it's up to what you want to have on your quilt. You can okay. leave the seam, you can take them out. Okay, all right. All right, so we've got that prepped, washed, dried. Then how do I decide, do you press it after? Well, you want to stabilize. Okay. Everything that you're gonna put in. Stabilize. And we'll, Johnny will come on and mm -hmm. talk about what type of stabilizers. Yes, so, so, so there's a lot of different stabilizers out there. Um, what I want to do though, before we stabilize, is I've got this shirt here. It's an, another Davis track and field. You can tell that's what my, my daughter did. And we're gonna take some scissors and... It has sleeves in it, so you've cut those sleeves out. Actually, my, I think my daughter already cut it. She's <laughs> so trying she to, wanted to wear it. She's trying to get me motivated to oh. finish, or to start she this got quilt for, start it for you. So I'm just gonna cut down the side seam. 
on both sides. Not perfectly, but... Okay. Okay, so then I have two sections. Um, I'm going to cut the top also. So you're just making two pieces out of it. Yes. So this piece here, I want to use this decal in my quilt. Okay. Let's see what's on the back of this one. Oh, oh. so this one has a little piece. So I think I want to incorporate that into my quilt as well. Okay. So before I can do anything else, I don't want to cut it to size. I want to stabilize it first. So I've got a couple here that I've already attached some stabilizer onto the back. You want to be really careful when you're, this is an iron-on. So you, you don't. You always want an iron-on, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, when you are ironing it, though, you have to be very careful because you don't want to melt any screen printing that might be on right. the T-shirt. So what I did was I um, took an extra piece of T-shirt that I had laying around, covered that, did it upside down, and ironed it from the back. And so did it, did it melt it any that it put that on to your other T-shirt? Nope. Okay. That's nope. Good. Some but may, but yeah. yours yeah. look like they've been worn and wear. <laughs> yes, well worn. So, okay. but definitely make sure you don't put the iron directly on there. Okay, that yeah. definitely yep. a good tip. And this one had the oh. lettering down the back, so I decided to use both of those. Okay, now I, that's going to be interesting to see how you're going to quilt or piece this because that, w I can't think that you will put, make a big square and yet this one, they're just going to be different. They are. But the piecing is the half fun of the part. fun of it, isn't yes. it? Yes. So there's lots of planning that you need to do. Right. If you're going to piece it all together. To and we'll show you some quilts that have had some planning. It's yes. going to be exciting. Okay. Yes. So tell me about this. Okay, what would so you do there? This that, is a that. mesh material. It's a football jersey, obviously very well used. That's how you want a football jersey to look. If it doesn't <laughs> look dirty, they're not working hard enough. Okay. So um, you'll see that there are holes through the fabric. The mesh. The mesh. Um, and so you don't want to put this directly on to the batting because it'll oh. come through. Or the um, stabilizer even. Or the stabilizer. You? So for something like this, I would recommend putting another piece of fabric behind it. And would you adhere it to it or just put it behind it? Do you know what I'm saying? Would you? Yeah. Ad I'd probably want to adhere it. Maybe just like a spray based. Okay. Just to keep it there and then um, And then once you quilt it, it's going to be stable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's like you could take uh, another color or even white. Mm -hmm a white piece of fabric and uh, press on that. I'm wondering though if you could just use the stabilizer because that's that the one you had was a woven stabilizer yeah and put that on there. I don't know it would be fun to take a little scrap and try it and see what it looks like. Yes and that's the fun part about these t-shirt quilts is that there are so many options out there so many different things that you can do there's no right or wrong answer so try it. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to bring Johnny on and he is going to talk to us about stabilizers and the batting that we will be using in quilts. So let's get him in here. Sounds good. Well, Johnny, you have got some prepared, but you've, tell us about the stabilizers that you've, that we've got here. So we assembled, uh, Vicki went to our local fabric store and just bought a bunch of different stabilizers they have there. The most, all these are Pellon, but there are other brands, but They're definitely they all, they, all they had was Pellon. So we have the Shape Flex and we got, we have it in white and black. I actually didn't know that they made black. So that was kind of cool to learn that they make black. And they have an off-white as well, right? Right. So, so go is, ahead. Go, no, I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> this is the Shape Flex, and these are all iron-on. So every stabilizer you have here is iron-on. Yeah, these are all iron-on. Okay. So this is the Shape Flex. And okay, then, wait a minute. Oh, go ahead. Let's open this up so we can see, because these are woven. This is a woven fabric. Yes, and that's what's great about this is it turns your T-shirt, which is a stretch into a woven. Okay. So it makes it, it, that's what gives it the stability. Okay. All right. So it's got the adhesive on the back of mm -hmm. it. 
All right. And one thing I did learn about the when, when using these is to not turn your iron way up. You want to keep your iron kind of just medium heat. That would maybe help from uh, melting the Yes, exactly. Too. So make sure you read the directions on the back or on the packaging. And Which is those. good because a lot of them come with this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if they don't, they have them like this one didn't have it. So you wrote them down, right? Right. So that was good. They actually had a little hand out there that oh, you could take nice. that talked about how to use it. Yeah. This is a black easy knit. And again, it's an iron-on. Okay, so the same, it has that adhesive, and you'll feel the adhesive on one side and not on the other, so make yeah. sure you get it on the right side yes. or you'll Definitely. ruin your iron. And then which... Uh, oh, this is the easy net too. Yeah, that's in the white. Right, so tell me about applying a net to another net, because that's what you're talking about here. Yeah, oh, we talked about the... Uh, directional, right? right? So if one is stretchy, if your t-shirt has a lot of stretch one direction, iron on this uh, knit the going the opposite direction. The that will give it more, the stretch going the opposite direction. Right. So that will it give it more stability. It. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good, good. Okay. And then this one. Which one? Uh, this is a non-woven, so it's kind of a, a like a, almost like a paper. You could tear it, but... Yeah. But it's still, once that's on there, it stabilizes. Yes. And we will list these on our, uh, along with the video, right? right. We'll list mm -hmm. the different ones that we've used. Yeah. So I have some t-shirts here that I already prepped. And I'm doing a t-shirt quilt for someone. So you've used a variety of... Yeah, I have two different kinds. You've got the kinds. woven and the non-woven. Yeah. So you can see just a little bit of the difference. And that didn't get pressed down all the way on the edge. Okay. But that's all right. And then we were going to talk about squaring them up. Okay. So this one, this is not final, but we just kind of want to isolate the main feature on the t-shirt quilt. So you don't want to have, you know, too much white space. Like this one's kind of fun. And these obviously, these are all for the same person. So we'll mm -hmm. have to do some piecing. And we'll talk more about that in a bit, right? Right, right. So, yeah, that's like just a fun. Yeah, fun way to accent, make sure you're... Okay. Uh, so highlighting the best part of each t-shirt. These are all, yeah, hi, absolutely. That's <laughs> what the t-shirt's all about, right? Yep. So. That's the woven. Mm -hmm. Now, so that really stabilized. There's no stretch to that. Yeah. I w was wondering that there's no stretch to that because that's definitely stable. Yep. I like this one. <laughs> Keep calm. I've got this. <laughs> this is a... Uh, yeah, they're definitely gamers on this one. Okay, the non-woven again. Yep, and then that one's the woven. Okay. And it's totally okay to mix them both. Yeah. In the same in the same quilt. Well, that's a good tip. Yeah. Okay. So it's a great mix. So if you have some of one, as long as it's stable. Uh huh. As long as it's stable, because then you're gonna piece it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that. Uh, what about batting? Let's talk batting. Okay, Johnny, when you said let's talk about batting, we have yeah, batting. We have batting, definitely. Okay. So, so this one is Thermore. This is an ultra thin. So some, one thing about t-shirt quilts is they can get heavy because there's several layers and this material can get pretty heavy. Okay. So if that's a concern, then make sure you use just a thin cotton batting. Okay. Or if you don't want it too hot. Yeah, if you don't want it too hot, if you live in right. a hot climate. Some people like just a nice thin quilt too, so that's great. This one, same thing. This is a bleach cotton, so if you have a lot of white t-shirts underneath, that's okay. a good idea to use that. This one we have here is wool, 100% wool. That would be like nice and airy, but it would give it just a little loft. Yes, yeah. That would like accentuate the quilting. And then a polyester. Because some people like polyester yeah. in it. And they, they're good for a lot of washing as well. But it's a light one. It's not. It's not a real heavy weight one. Like yeah, real high. this is a throw size, so you can see it's not too thick, not right, too much. Right. Right. And then of course this is a black batting. So if you have a lot of black T-shirts, that'd be great to use. Because I all of these here, I think, could use that yeah. black, except for that one white. The that Superman. You had. <laughs> There's a Spider-Man one. There's, yeah. But right. There was a lot of black in that one. So we actually talked about. The dark, the black stabilizer, mm -hmm. and then the black batting. So there are, there are options yeah. when you're quilting so that if, if they are dark, 
that would be a really good option to use the darker one. Definitely. Or the white. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to bring Christine or Kim in, and she is going to talk about piecing and thread and some more things about t-shirts. We're getting prepped. We have to do prep before we can start quilting. Okay? Awesome. Okay, Kim, mm -hmm. I see that you've got, we've got a few quilts here, yeah. and it's all about piecing now because yes. we've got them cut, we mm -hmm. think. Yes. To the size, and mm -hmm. this quilt right here are all different sizes. And then now you've got to do that jo uh, puzzle to right. put it all together. Right, it's a little bit of a Tetris puzzle. It's pretty fun, though. But before we do that Tetris puzzle, Tell me about this one. This one right here. So if you look at this block right here, they actually took the back of a tank top. Isn't that so fun? And then it they actually cool. applicated over the top of just some a t-shirt back is what I'm assuming because this yeah, is that this same is knit fabric. There, huh? Once again, it is this back piece is stabilized. I can feel that there isn't any stabilizer in this top piece, but she stitched it down onto yeah, this one. Right. So okay, that's there's perfect. another one similar yeah. to that that I thought was the same thing. Isn't that fun? The back with the straps yeah, in it. With their little lightning bolt. Yes. Isn't that so fun? So don't be afraid to look outside the box of it. It doesn't have to just be a t-shirt making a square or rectangle right. block. You can absolutely use fun pieces. So this one has also wide sashings, mm -hmm. narrow sashings, yep. just to make it work. And yep. we're going to hold this up so you'll get a full view of it. Mm -hmm. But just showing some some uh, different things on here as we look at these quilts. And oh. we might as well just talk about this now yeah. that we're looking at it. This is so much fun. Look at all that sparkle. So it's this is a drill team. And I'm actually, by the fill of the fabric, I'm guessing this is probably the back of a jacket. So you could use like a lightweight knit jacket. Right. You can totally use that. And you can see that she has... Um, not quilted over this part, but right. she did quilt over this part. I would be hard to quilt uh, yeah. on those, but yeah, she actually did quilt right, right. through mm -hmm. those. That that yeah. works. Isn't that, isn't that yeah. great? So, you know, think outside the box. Any of these mementos are fun to use, and don't be afraid of sparkles and, and bling. Look, they, they look beautiful. Okay, in this now quilt. we're going more because more fussy cutting and Yes. That's her name. This must be Allison. Yes, it must be Allison. <laughs> and how fun that they cut just this little logo off and repeated it three times. And they made a very narrow block here, you can see, right. compared to the other ones. But they used that same wide sashing on it. So, you know, you can use everything. And there's, Whoa. there's oh, another. Oh, okay. This is a problem. This is really high plastic, yeah. so that would be one you'd have to be really careful with mm -hmm. on getting the stabilizer yep. on. Yep. And they put the oh. neck in it, the seam. Isn't that so fun? Yeah, it looks like this came off probably uh -oh. in front of a sweatshirt. Uh oh, look at this. I know. Here's a tank top. There's another one. And once again, you can see that they just applicate that tank top, the front of the tank top, onto, once again, it feels just like some extra t shirt mm -hmm. back that was left over. Yeah. Good Isn't idea. That's so great. So, you know, be brave. Wow. Make things there's work. There's a lot of bling and there's a lot yeah. of fun going on here. Hey, that look at that raglan sleeves. Yep. Yep. So, it doesn't just have to be a basic t-shirt. You can I needed more, so I used the sleeve. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Make it the right what size. What a fun quilt for some young girl that's oh, going to yeah. just cherish this forever. All the memories are right mm -hmm. here in this quilt. And look, even a really shiny fabric was used on this one. Okay, so that, you, shiny, that isn't even a knit. That's nope. a woven. It is a woven. but Well, we make them all into a woven when we exactly. put the stabilizer on mm -hmm. it. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. And you can see that they actually have this um, sleeve seam right here in it. This is from the back of a jacket. And once again, they have just quilted right over the top of all those sequins and everything. Those actually aren't sequins. Oh, they are sequins. Sequins on yep. like a little decal that was yeah, ironed are. on. And then it's got some wool. It looks like some wool applique on it. Yeah. Wow. Look what we can do. There's so much. I know. So many fun things you can do. You just have to look at the mementos you want to put into the quilt and say, okay, how can I use this? And here's some okay. great ideas. We're going to put this up here. Wait. Hold on. Johnny and... Christina have been standing here the whole time holding a quilt. Let's talk about this quilt yes. back here. You can see this quilt and 
uh, most of the blocks are the same size. Yeah. Um, you can see quite a few right in this area that are close to the same size. Even this one and this one here. This one's a little bigger, this one's a little narrower. But you can see that there's no sashing in this quilt. Right. So you can absolutely do a quilt just with t-shirts. Okay, so if I'm sewing this together, mm -hmm. And it's a quilt. Mm -hmm. We're always taught to do quarter inch seams. Oh, this is the one time you break that rule. We really recommend that you do a half inch and why? seam. Because we're dealing with all that knit and the edge of that stabilizer. And as you saw in some of the ones we, we showed you, some of that stabilizer can sometimes peel a little bit at the edges. Okay. And we wanna make sure that it stays really secure. The other thing you wanna be sure and do is, these are heavy fabrics. So you want to make sure that you press those seams open. And when you have a half inch okay. seam allowance, it makes it a lot easier to press that seam open. That way we don't have a lot of bulk on one side and make your quilt kind of almost maybe lumpy filling. Okay. So it makes it smooth. So one of the things that we did uh, when we started doing this, mm -hmm. preparing for this, is we reached out to all of our national educators, yes. handy quilter educators, and ask them who of you have done quilts, t-shirt quilts, and what are your recommendations and different things. And so we got some really interesting, some good tips. Mm -hmm. And one of the tips was that, uh, that the one shirt that Christina showed, mm -hmm. or that Johnny showed, the stabilizer was starting to peel off. Yeah. And the tip that uh, one of our educators gave was to actually stitch a stay stitch, an eighth of it, it an eighth of an, an inch, inch around <laughs> right. that so that it stabilized it, it yeah. held it in place. Exactly. And then with that um, half inch seam around it, it's going to be really nice and stable, especially once you've quilted over the top of it. So everything. again, one of our educators said with that half inch seam, press it open, but don't do a stitch in the ditch. Right. You don't want to stitch right on top of another stitch. Because all line. your stitching thread. Yep. If you do want to do a stitch in the ditch, she did it about, I think she said about an eighth of an inch just to the side right. of it so that it's actually going through the layers of fabric and not the layers of stitching. You don't want to inadvertently open a seam. Right, right. Yeah. So really good tips here. And mm -hmm. we're trying to implement all those tips from our educators that yeah. give us good information. Oh, so no sashings in this, mm -hmm. just pieced and then quilted, but I want to bring up these letters. So if you want to step in, you two, yeah. come on in close, because we want our close-up camera to get this. And look at these letters that we have here. That's no, just applique. off of a, yeah. They, have, they were applique probably on the shirt. Yeah. Some professional did it. I, and then, I'm assuming some professional did it. Yeah. They look professional. <laughs> well, whoever did the quilt was a yeah. professional. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But these are, you know, this is kind of that to remove them before or not. Um, this quilter chose to leave them on here, and then she quilted right over the top of them, and it, it quilted beautifully. It she did. She stabilized behind them, and it, it looks really good. So don't be afraid of leaving um, something like this, embellishments like this on here, or even the crystals that we showed you earlier that are smaller right. sequins. You can quilt right over the top. Okay, of let's take this one aside. And Johnny and Christina, will you hold this one up? It's just amazing. This is such a fun on quilt. Okay. Yeah, look at all that. And I love how they used this lighter background for the sashing and really made it feel light and airy. Uh, it goes really well with the color scheme of all the t shirts. Right, that's the color of their yeah. school, right? And I don't think there's two blocks in there that are exactly the same size yet look with sashing <laughs> she made them all fit right doesn't it look beautiful that uh, that was a real puzzle to put together yeah, yeah. it looks really that great is though. beautiful okay now we're going to move aside with another one that johnny actually quilted yes this quilt is amazing and we're going to have them hold this up Johnny made this one for a fundraiser and it was auctioned off. And the really unique thing about this quilt, he was given brand new t-shirts, which he, we talked about prepping earlier, he prepped those. And then he was also given this really great African bark cloth to use as sashing. African what? It was bark cloth. Bark. We bark cloth. Okay. <laughs> bark. 
And you can see that he did not use just, oh, I'm going to do squares. He used lots of different sashing in between all of these. He even made this one diamond shaped. Did you piece this, Johnny? Yes. Yeah. He pieced this one. He pieced it and quilted it. And he went outside into the border. He had a lot of fun with this. So uh, t-shirt quilts can really be a lot of fun to piece. OK, let's bring it up here because I want to point out a few things with this. Uh, thread. This is a variegated yes. thread. Well, it's variegated on the back. Variegated on the back. And it looks like it's a solid gold on the front. And this is one where you can see that he used a thread. It really does blend. You got a lot of gold in a lot in here. of it. But then where he has this black cloth, the quilting really pops. And it just adds another layer of texture to the quilt, which is so fun. I love it. I do, too. I love it. And the, the density of the quilting is just perfect. Yep. It's not too oh, dense. This quilting just fits it on the outside. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Just fits that style makes it almost look like he used a printed fabric uh -huh. rather than just a solid. Perfect. It's Perfect. really fun. Okay, so let's, let's bring this one back over mm -hmm. and talk about the, the quilting, on the yes. thread. So this one was a white mm -hmm. thread and just a loose loops, mm -hmm. which is just row after row yep. of loops. Looks awesome. It does, it does. So we've got the white thread on here, but we also have a lot of white going on there. Right. So it totally works. Yeah. It blends in a lot, but in the places that it does show up, it, it just, it looks really nice. So, so far what I'm seeing, all of these quilts that we have been showing are just edge to edge quilting. Right. Right. When would we do custom quilting? Uh, maybe for a quilt like Johnny's where there was a lot of extra time put into the piecing. If you wanted to, to bring a little more attention to it, you could. but. I know any t-shirt quilts I've done in the past, I've always chosen to do an edge to edge because I really want the t-shirts to be the focus, not the quilting. Okay. Um, when do we si decide not to quilt over something? If, if we feel like it's going to be uh, too thick for the machine to go over, like for example, we showed those uh, where it's really densely, like really plasticky, uh -huh. because especially because that needle is going to punch holes through there, and I don't want any holes to show up. Um, also, when we had those larger crystals, we didn't quilt over right. those. And some of those patches that had the dense embroidery, like for example, you know, letters from a Letterman jacket. So Christine is going to bring some in. Yeah. She has some letters. And, and we're going to look at those and see, because I would definitely think I'm not going to quilt over the top no, of those, because that's no. got a lot of dense Absolutely. thread in it. So Christina, it, come on in Christina and let's, first of all, we would definitely take oh, off the, the, the fun pins. <laughs> pins and I, I'm sure our machine could go through oh, yeah. that, but I don't think I would want to go over no. the top of it. So it's, it gives that nice felt mm -hmm. that you can actually stitch right around. So that would be custom quilting. Yep. And you know what, on something like this, I would actually think of Let's lay down a nice background quilting like this. And then when you get done with the pass, put it down and applique it down totally. with our machine using your glide foot right over the top of it. And that way it's really nice and Look secure. Look at that. All of that could be It would be, be in, so fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how much space would I leave unquilted? Um, well, a good rule of thumb is nothing bigger than your fist. However, you can always check the manufacturer's recommendations on the batting you're using. And if it says no more than six inches, you could leave a little bit of a bigger space than your fist. But just make sure you check those directions. So some of it will depend on the batting. Right. Some of it, though, will depend on if, if there's a face. You don't right. want to stitch over a face no, at all. No, no, no. That would really distort <laughs> yeah. that face. Yeah. But for the most part, you want to be able to quilt equal density throughout it. Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay. Makes it look really nice. All right. What I think you have something else under here. We have oh we were just we're gonna talk about piecing these together. Okay. Um now a really great we're tip just move we those off Christina, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> a really great tip we got from one of our educators was if you are gonna use sashing to use maybe a more tightly woven fabric, she says that she always uses batiks, which I thought was a great tip. If you feel like you maybe want a little more stabilizing factor, a batik is really great. And once again, those half inch seams. Okay, so definitely 
a, a thicker yeah. or a wider seam on that. So don't forget to account for that when you're trimming these blocks. Instead of leaving it a half an inch wider all the way around, you're going to want to leave it an inch wider so that you account for that half inch seam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I think now that we've got it built, the yeah. quilt built, I think it's time to maybe talk about actually quilting it. Okay. Because that's really what we're here about, is yeah. to quilt that quilt. Quilting that quilt. Okay, Absolutely. so let's, we'll, we'll bring some ideas in in a minute, and we'll be right back. All right, we're all together here. Yes. We, all four of us have opinions. Quilters always have opinions, right? <laughs> always. So always. let's talk about, let's talk about backing. Okay. So Johnny, this is a quilt you quilted. I'm turning it over. It's a wide back cotton. Just okay. so you use like a solid 100% cotton, cotton. Okay, white bags, that'd be great. No seams. Yes, nice. exactly. Right. Okay, so then this was done by Sarah here at Handy Quilter. And you notice that white back was a solid. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Yeah, she did a fun print. And I'm pretty sure there's a seam in here. So she just used regular, you know, 42 inch wide. Yeah, she, had a, she has oh, a seam in it right there, you can right see. There. But how fun is it to have that print on the back? Right. Brings in right. a whole other really element. Cute. Totally. Okay, let's move this one aside because we have a, another one, which this, was this heavy when you were holding it up? Just a little. <laughs> were you complaining, your arms complaining? A little bit, yep. <laughs> I love this quilt. I love the way it's quilted. I love the bling. Yeah. Everything about it. So cute. What is it? Minky. It's Minky. Minky, oh my gosh. Can you just see curling up? This girl has gone to college now. She takes this awesome quilt and she just curls up with all the memories mm -hmm. and the warmth of this. Yes. yes. Especially at any college in Utah. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, up here in the north. Yes. It gets cold. So Minky, it works. It, it will make it heavier. So what type of batting would you recommend on something like this? Something thin, I yeah. would. Yeah, not to make it, not to make it even more heavy than ours. So this looks be. like a cotton. Yeah, it's very thin. Right. Which is perfect. Okay. What now we're talking about weight. What about denim? You know, I actually recently did a t-shirt quilt for a cousin of mine and she brought me denim to put on the back. But it was a lightweight denim, almost like a chambray. Uh-huh. And she bought it actually from like the uh, clothing clothing fabric section. Okay. And it was awesome because it was 54 wide, it was great, and it quilted beautifully. So you could. All right, so we can use cotton, wide backs, mm -hmm. minky, and you know what? They are now making minky in wide yes. backs, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't have a seam. Yes. Definitely. I know this one did have a seam, but they are making it. Denim, did I already say denim? Flannel. <laughs> Oh, good I idea. I love flannel on the back of a quilt. Oh, that would be really favorite. cozy, too. Yes. Yeah. So, because we have shrunk the shirts, mm -hmm. would you shrink your, would you pre-wash the fabric before you put that, before you put the quilt together? Your sashings. Mm, uh, I don't pre-wash fabric. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Depends on what color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a great, good, great discussion here because yes. I think we have a lot of different opinions. I think... I don't know. I think it I would just depend much. on, <laughs> yeah, I don't pre-wash much. I think it would depend, depend on the project, right? Okay, so if I if I were to do flannel, I would probably pre-wash. Yeah. Flannel shrinks a little mm -hmm. different, yeah. and then I would pre-wash the back as well. For sure, yeah. pre-wash the back, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before we move on from backs, though, there's something else I like to do on backings. Okay. I like to use up everything that <laughs> yeah. I have. Yes, you do. <laughs> So if I have extra pieces left over or extra t-shirts that didn't quite fit in my Tetris puzzle, I'll put those on the back. And this particular quilt that you'll be working on later, it okay. actually has a block in the back. Yeah, I think it has so. more than a block. Yeah. I saw some. A so this is actually a t-shirt block right here. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the camera move over to it. That is a t-shirt. Yeah. And then around the back there, there are more t-shirts on this. Yeah which is really fun. If you have more t-shirts than you have quilt, put them on the back. Yep. Yeah. Or Tetris the back too. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Use up all those leftovers. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, my son has a box, not a plastic <laughs> bag, a box of t-shirts from his soccer days. 
and before he got married a few years ago, Mom, will you do this? So this has really inspired me to want to pull those out because I've learned so much about, my thought was I always had to have the exact same size block. And this today has shown me I don't. No, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I can. I could find some soccer fabric mm -hmm. or sporty fabric mm -hmm. and do all different kinds or solids around it. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, I could just go to town on this. Maybe we should have a competition to see who can finish our t-shirt quilt first. Your bag and my box. <laughs> yes. We'll have to try that. And my see. stack. <laughs> It'd be a good, great gr Christmas yeah. present, wouldn't it? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We better yeah. get to work. <laughs> That's right. Well, we have got, we've, we've gone through everything except for I want to, what about thread, Kim? Thread. Let's talk about thread a little bit. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend using a really lightweight thread because these are heavier When you say fabrics. lightweight. Like, you know, I wouldn't use like a 60 weight or 100 weight to quilt this with. I would use probably like a 40 or a 50 weight thread. A little bit of a heavier thread. Um, I really love using a polyester on these so it's all yeah. Polyester. Yeah. yeah it's all it's all polyester um but at oh, the same maybe time there's a lot of cotton t-shirts yeah there's yeah. a lot of cotton t-shirts i say at the same time 100 percent cotton thread a good 40 weight or 50 weight 100 percent cotton thread is going to be perfect and i do love to choose something that's going to blend okay and this does blend yes gives you a great texture mm -hmm. lets you see those shirts absolutely yeah. right okay so color wise we talked earlier that uh don't don't have the thread be the main event right right so yeah let it not blend. me I did except, the main for, except for you <laughs> did do the main <laughs> unless you want to break all the rules which shawnee does yeah but it was so effective yes because of the black, yeah, it was effective. That black mm -hmm. outside, it just, it fit. Yep. So then you have to just think of those things. It fit. Yep. All right. Uh, Christina. Yes. You had a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about just an idea. An idea <laughs> on this. I said, oh, we need to take these off before we sew them on. But then we can't get them back on, can we? And, ha and hide those backings. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have the pins on the quilt permanently, I would leave them on because you're not going to stitch through this area of the letter. You're just going to stitch on this white area. And so you can leave the pins on without any problems. So how would they wash when you would wash this quilt? I don't know. We'll have to try it and see. <laughs> because, Fair. you know, would they, would they eventually, would they come off? Or? That's, that's a good point. You have to try it and see. I think if it got bad enough and you needed to take them off, you could clip them off, and I guess you'd have the backing still inside the quilt. But well, there's so, something to think yeah. about, isn't it? <laughs> yep. So let's ask the audience. Let's have them okay. type us in what they would do. What would you do? Yeah. Would you put them on, leave them on, or would you maybe make some little mini quilt that would oh, hang ooh. in the room? And that's just what I would probably put them do. on. Yeah, that's a yeah. It's kind of bulky. You don't want to. It's kind be of fun sleeping though. with a, a metal pin against your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So we've we've talked about that. Um, I'm gonna move this off. I love this quilt though. I think I'm take just it. gonna hold it. No, I thought I'd just hold it. Just cozy up with it. <laughs> Here, I'll let you take it. So, Christina, let's talk about. We're ready to quilt. We need to choose designs. Wait, let's find out. Let's figure out what designs. How? How do I do this? Do, do I just? Yeah. How do I quilt it? What do I use? Well, Christina. What's my got abilities? Some, yeah, Christina's got some great ideas for us. So if you're a panograph person, I like this one. Yeah. Okay. Chinese crescent. Chinese crescent. So you want to pick a pattern that's fairly open. You don't want really dense quilting on this heavy quilt. Um, you just want to add a little bit of texture and not take away from the t-shirts. So we, there's lots and lots of different pantographs that are available out there. This particular one is from Golden Threads. It's the Chinese Crescent. Mm -hmm. So, and I think this comes in a digital, I think it's from Karen Emerson, I think. And yes, uh, it comes digital too, I yeah. think. But there are others that are similar to this because this really looks awesome on a quilt. Yes. If you don't do panographs, but you do groovy boards, there are a few that would be good for that. Can I pass those to you, Johnny? Yeah. 
Thank you. Oh, if you can't do a stipple, we have a stipple for you. And the stipple is a great quilting design for t-shirt quilts. Right. If you want to do it freehand, it gives you that ability to move around different areas that you don't necessarily want to have quilted over. Okay. If you're comfortable doing the, the free motion. If not, groovy boards are great. Simple. We've got the Baptist fan. Very traditional, except Baptist fan is becoming the new modern, isn't it? Yeah, yep, it is. definitely. I saw that just yesterday. Someone did the Baptist fan. Right. The and the same thing with the clamshells. They're becoming the new modern. Mm -hmm. So that would be awesome on yeah. a quilt. Yeah. Yep. So those are just some different ideas oh, look. of fairly open Row designs. after row of these designs. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Okay. So groovy boards. Or if you're free motion, you can just do what you want. Or you could use the a uh, computerized quilting, mm -hmm. the Pro Stitcher, mm -hmm. yep. and there are a lot of designs out there on the Pro Stitcher themselves, or that you could purchase mm -hmm. from designers. Okay, so we've got that decided. We know our designs. We've got our everything is decided. How do we prep our machine? So it's just like loading any traditional quilt. We'll load our backing first, then we'll load our top on put the batting in between base down the sides um, the quilt we have on the frame right now so this is a special quilt to me my family gets together for a family reunion every year over Labor Day weekend and my mom recently made this quilt and this is one of those classics she said oh I'm gonna quilt it myself on my domestic machine and she got part way through and handed it off to me so you can see that it's already got some little W's um, quilted into it which is kind of fun and she just wants me to put a fill into all the sashing so here. what she did is if kind of like she was tying this quilt yes mm -hmm. but she just put a w every mm -hmm. so it tacked yep. it down yep. are you going to when you said you're going to finish quilting it are you going to come in and do any quilting or are you going to mm -hmm. just do it in the sashings so she asked me not to do any quilting inside of here and if you look you know our, our rule that we talked about earlier fist size i'm not leaving anything bigger than that unquilted right so i'm just going to quilt out here in the sashing and what did you what are you quilting i'm just going to do kind of a loop meander just something really simple you can see that this fabric is really busy it's fishing hooks because we almost all have our reunion by the river. I was going to ask, are yeah. you fishermen? Yeah. And you can see here, this is really fun. Right here, she took a, a little uh, part of a t-shirt, actually stabilized it, and then she embroidered it down on top, just on her domestic machine. And this, I'm just going to quilt right over the top of because okay. it is in the sashing. Right. And this is a quilt. Uh, my mom cut the backing exactly to size and then spray basted it. So I've, Christine has actually got these here. You can see that I've actually... Uh, a little extenders? Yes, yeah, I used the little extenders. I just took some scrap fabric that we have and I basted it onto the edge there so that I have enough room to just let it all work. And because she has... <laughs> you getting that I'm figured all out? I'm here. Yes, you are, but oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get those clamps right. Because you basted it, you can actually rip that off and mm -hmm. move it down the quilt as you quilt. Exactly, as I advance it. Good tip, yep. good tip yep. for you. Yep. Okay, so with all the embellishments and all the different things that are happening, mm -hmm. is this hard to go through all of this? What, what, no. what are we preparing our machine for? So as you can see, I have put the glide foot on here which is Nothing. fantastic. I mean, we've talked about it. If you have pockets or anything like that, it's gonna go right, right over those edges, not flip edges. It's gonna go right over the top of anything that's appliqued. And if it's a little puffier, because maybe you are using a loftier batting or you're using minky on the back, which does give a little bit of loft, it's gonna quilt right over the top. Not push the fabric. Exactly. Now, if you don't have a glide foot, but you happen to have our echo feet, the large echo foot it would also work really really well to quilt with here because once again it just gives that wide base to hold everything in place while we're quilting okay the best th this is great mm -hmm. I have I have definitely used this yeah. before but the glide foot because it has that bowl yeah. shape it actually it just glides, glides over <laughs> <laughs> what can I say it glides over I always try to think of a different word but <laughs> it glides it's it like salt how do you describe yeah. salt it's salty <laughs> exactly it exactly glides. it glides um this 
Larger echo foot is also fantastic too if you wanted to do a bigger, looser design, like a bigger, looser stipple. And you can make sure that you're never going to cross or get any closer than that. It's going to keep your quilting more consistent. So that's right. another great reason to use the glide foot. Yeah, it gives you a real good guide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and you could, if you wanted to do some free motion, or I mean some echoing around yes. it, you could, it would give you your guide perfect there. without having to mark anything okay anything else that we have not covered that you feel like is so johnny anything no i quilted? think we're good get it finished get it quilted yeah, let's get it quilted <laughs> oh i guess uh, binding, after you but we need to quilt it, it first right <laughs> Can you bind it on the frame? Absolutely. I and bind on the frame all the time. And what would you use to bind? I use the small square foot, the quarter inch square foot, because then I get that perfect quarter inch seam all the way down the edge. It makes it really easy to just keep that binding exactly where it should so be. So you put the binding on, take it off, hand bind it, or else? Machine. Machine bind. On a quilt like this, I'm going to take it to my domestic machine and stitch it down that second time around when I fold the binding over Why? the edge. Why couldn't I hand bind it? Oh, you absolutely can. Oh, okay. You can <laughs> if you want to, but I know from experience, t-shirt quilts tend to get loved and washed a lot, and I just feel like that uh, stitch down on a like domestic a machine, quilt. yeah, like a baby quilt, <laughs> yeah. it's just a little more secure than okay. my so you can use let's just kind of wrap up here we can use pretty much any type of fabric that is comfortable to the skin yes. and i wouldn't use a duck cloth or anything but oh, that would make it so heavy yeah, it would be very heavy yes unless you want it as a to lay out so threads cotton poly threads mm -hmm. uh what about glitter and metallic threads you know, I think those could be fun. You could. I did Magnifico on that one. Okay. Worked out great. Oh, that's good to know. So mm -hmm. that's a trilobal polyester yeah. embroidery mm -hmm. thread. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our thread, our batting. We've got a lot of good choices in batting. We've got a lot of good choices in stabilizers. Uh, go to your local quilt shop and ask them what they've got. You definitely want it to be a fusible stabilizer because yes. that's what stabilizes it. Um, wash your T-shirts. Have fun. Find, have fun. Have some. Find some really fun fabric. To your quilt, that quilt you did, yeah. so much fun fabric in that. It's just, I mean, it's just busy. You just look at. You never get finished looking at it. Well, and it doesn't look like a traditional T-shirt quilt. That's right. what I love. And about that, that quilt. is something. Some people don't like that tradition, but you know what? When your kids want those T-shirts made up, mm -hmm. that bag of T-shirts that you and I have. Yep. We need to do it and make it for them. Right. Get it done. Because it's a, a memory. a finished quilt is better than a bag of T-shirts <laughs> in the closet. <laughs> that is for sure. Well, thank you for joining us today. We have had so much fun learning because uh, I've, I've learned a lot. Yeah, I'm excited now. Yeah, I've learned a lot. I know you guys have done quilts, T-shirt quilts, and so it's, that's why we reached out to our national educators for and um, just did a lot of research on this because there's so many choices that you can make. So thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications. And we will see you next month with another HQ Live. Bye.